monster mutants from Hollywood. Today we learn that they are us. Understanding what at the genetic level is driving those processes. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Mutant. The word conjures the strange, the monstrous, something gone terribly wrong biologically. And the result is, well, scary. Hollywood horror films are full of mutant beings doing their mutant thing. Attack of the 50-foot woman. Incredibly huge. Whether it's a giant woman or a human turned into a fly, movie mutants are generally acknowledged to be mistakes or freaks of nature. Giant! Giant! These movies were made about the same time the double helix was discovered. Today we might try and blame her Amazonian dimensions on catastrophic mutations in her developmental genes. Truth is, mutants and mutations aren't just the stuff of old B-movies. Mutations and mutant genes are a part of real life, too. When do these mutations occur? It varies wildly. Some genes change in less than a day, some over a lifetime, some over centuries. It's evolution, and it isn't just something that happened a long time ago. It's going on right now. For example, if there is a gene that protects against an infectious disease, and then a wave of that infection, a plague, if you will, hits a population, you can see that the copies of the gene that protect against that infection will be more common in the offspring because the offspring that survived had to be resistant to that disease. In this way, changes or mutations in the human genome have gradually collected and been added over time. Some are good and some are a mixed bag. The same DNA change that causes this terrible disease, sickle cell anemia, that causes so much suffering, has also been shown to protect against infection with malaria. So in fact, the reason in some populations that there's a high frequency of the sickle cell anemia mutation, you might call it, is because the offspring who inherit it are more protected against malaria. Is that a shield protecting us against malaria or a defect in our genome? Well, I guess in some ways it's a trade-off, it's both. The human genome is rigged for survival and thus over time incorporates changes that help. But not all changes in our genetic code defend us. Some are killers. Medical researchers worldwide want to find the mutant disease genes in all of us and use them to create therapies. And clues are the misspellings in the genome. If you're a geneticist who's hunting for the genes which underlie diseases, then what you're looking for are places where the genomes differ between individuals that have those diseases and individuals that don't. And so from that standpoint, it's this fraction of the genome that differs between individuals that's actually more interesting. Dolly is a computational biologist at the Whitehead Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He uses statistical analysis on human DNA to find genetic signposts pointing to disease. There are nearly 10 million alternate spellings among the genes of the human genome. Some are good, others seem to have little or no impact. Still other misspellings are like smoking guns pointing to disease. What I'm showing you here is the result of sequencing a short region on chromosome 5. We would find a G at this certain position here. And the other two-thirds of the time, we'd find a C at this position here. But what it turns out to be the case is that individuals carrying the G at this spot are maybe two to three times more likely to develop Crohn's disease over the course of their life than individuals who are just carrying C at that location. In the movies, mutants are tall stories, unreal. But inside us, gene mutations can create monsters that are all too real. 
Todd Golub researches genetic mutations that create malignant monsters. The monster isn't 50 feet tall. It's the size of a single microscopic cell that has gone berserk. In the early days of thinking about the genetics of cancer, it was a one mutation, one cancer model where people thought that it would only take one mutation to cause a tumor. It's now quite clear that that's not the case, that it's more likely that there will require several mutations, the exact number still not being clear. We know that when we look at the genetic pattern of cancer cells and compare them to the genetic patterns of normal cells, there are a huge number of differences at the genetic level, maybe thousands of genes. Only a small number of those, perhaps a couple, are actually choke points for the development of that cancer. Worldwide, researchers are looking for mutant genes at places like the Sanger Center in England, just south of the other Cambridge. They want to know all the misspellings and mutations that promote cancer and why they occur. Exposure to chemical carcinogens cause mutations. Exposure to damaging UV radiation causes mutations. Um, defects in just general DNA repair. I mean, to be able to replicate the entire three the billion base pairs of DNA accurately every time is, is a huge task and sometimes mistakes are made and that's the genesis of what causes cancer. Cells normally behave quite nicely. They grow when they should, they don't grow when they shouldn't, and they grow where they should and not where they shouldn't. Cancer breaks all those rules. Cancer cells grow inappropriately, they move throughout the body and grow where they shouldn't, and understanding what at the genetic level is driving those processes, why cancer cells evade the immune system, why they can grow in the liver, why they can grow in the brain when they shouldn't be there. I mean, understanding the basis of that, again, sort of builds this knowledge base and sort of this notion of knowledge being power. The more knowledge we have about cancer, the more power we have to control it. When the human genome was sequenced, it was, in effect, a genetic snapshot, a freeze frame captured at a point in human evolution. The question is, what will a human genome look like 10,000 years from now? If history is any indicator, it'll depend entirely on what kind of a world we will be living in. I think the human genome is a changing, fluid, dynamic entity spread across 12 billion copies carried all over the world by different people. It carries variability that was handed down through the generations from the shared ancestors who lived in Africa. New mutations occur, new changes occur every generation when the DNA is copied and in, potentially in every cell of our body. And how those DNA changes, the ones we inherited in common and the new ones that occur in our bodies, interact with the environment in which we live and its changing characteristics is a wonderful dance. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.